I'm probably going to confuse you a bit. Stay with me, okay? Probably going to confuse you with, so stay with me, all right? Let's kind of let's do the math here. When you're looking at what your back pay is, sometimes people ask their representatives, what am I going to get if I'm approved? And this is the first thing that you'll probably find with a lot of representatives. They don't want to tell you. And most times people get really angry because they're like, how come you won't tell me? Because there are way too many unknowns. And so what they'll say, well, what's my best case scenario? Well, I, the problem is that in the best case scenario, they don't want to do that to you because what ends up happening is that if you hold on to that, that's what you're going to fixate on. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Let's go and talk about the calculations. That's really what you want to know about. So the first thing you need to know is the, the day you need, the, 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 the first thing that controls all this is what date did your disability begin? Not the date you were approved. The date your disability began is what we call your onset date of disability. So if you so if they ask you, you're applying today, when did your condition prevent you from being able to work um, eight hours a day, five days a week? When was it when did it prevent you from being able to perform substantial gainful activity? So if you say, Well, I mean, I'm applying today, but my disability began in June, January 1, 2014, that's the date. That if, if they determine you or approve you on that date, that's the date of disability. That is the onset date of disability. That date is crucial because that is the one that is used in reference to how everything else gets paid. Okay? So, always keep in matter. This is the date that controls a lot of times because that's the date that controls in terms of how you get paid. Now, there's a variety of programs out that you'll see for, for disability benefits. There's usually disabled widows, disabled widows. But the two biggest ones that most people look at is Supplemental Security Income and SSD, so Social Security Disability. The way you get paid is different for both. Let's start with the SSI. I want you to listen carefully. For SSI, the furthest you can go back is the date of the application unless the date you were found disabled occurred after your application date. Let me say it again. Supplemental Security Income the furthest, the earliest you can get disability benefits if you are approved for SSI only is the date of your application unless you are found to be disabled after the date you apply. I'm going to give you two, two examples. Example number one, let's assume you applied for SSI on January 1, 2015. You told the government you became disabled January 1, 2014. So you get approved on December 29, 2016. Awesome. And they find that you were disabled. Okay, they find that you were disabled on January 1, 2014. You're happy about that. But remember what I said. You applied on January 1, 2015. So what does that mean? Even though they found you disabled a year before your application, the earliest you can get is your application. What does that mean? You don't get that year before the application. You only get the day of the application forward. Now, let's try another example. Same thing. You applied on January 2015. You said you were disabled January 1, 2014. You were approved December 29, 2016. But they found you disabled, not January 1, 2014, but June 1, 2016. So what does that mean? Well, you're thinking, well, at least I'll get the application. No, you will not because they found you disabled after your application. You will only get benefits starting on June 1, 2016, you know, taking into consideration any of the calculations and stuff like that. Okay. That's SSI. Let's talk about SSD. SSD, the earliest you can go back is up to a year before the application. Again, unless you were found disabled after your application date. Now, here's something that you need to understand with SSD. There's a waiting period that comes in there. It's a five-month waiting period. So just think of this. Any date they find you disabled, tack on five months, and that's the date when your benefits start. However, it gets a little tricky if you're if you're dealing with an uh, older onset date that's a, or greater than a year before your application. Let's break it down a couple of times. I'm going to give you three examples. Follow with me. So you apply January 1, 2015. 
You said you became disabled on January 1, 2013. You get approved, and they find that you were disabled on January 1, 2013. And now you're saying to yourself, well, attorney reads, we add the five months. That means I should be eligible for benefits for January, so January, February, March, April, May. So June 1, 2013. No. What did I say? The most you can get is up to a year before. So that means you applied on January 1, 2015. They found you disabled January 1, 2013. You'll only go back to January 1, what? 2014. That's a year before. That's the first example. Second example. Same thing. Let's say they found you disabled January 1. You applied January 1, 2015. Said you were disabled January 1, 2013. They approved you, but they said your disability began June, June 1, 2016. Now you're like, okay, so does that mean I get a benefit starting on June 1? No, five months later. That means your benefits will start November 1st, 2016. Now, Go back. One more example. I know you're like, God, I'm just confusing. Follow me along. Rewind this and let's do it again. You applied. Third example. You applied January 1, 2015. You indicated you became disabled on January 1, 2014. So they approve you and they give you that date. You're like, hot dog. Boom. You're thinking I'm in there. Well, guess what? What did I say? Five months after that. So you wouldn't get June, January 1, 2014. Five months later, you would get June 1, 2014. I know this is all weird. And I tell people, when people get this and they're like, I'm just so confused. I said, listen, this usually all works itself out. But here's another thing you need to keep in mind. There may be other factors that come into play. Are you getting workers' comp benefits? Are you getting other retirement benefits? Are there any assets or resources? Are you getting veterans benefits? And all those things will affect your back pay. And so if you wonder why social why attorneys or representatives don't like going into the discussion of what you're going to get is because when you're going through the disability process, their focus is on getting you on disability. That's all they care about. They want to, they want to get you approved and get you as much money as you possibly can. But when you start doing the nuts and bolts, it, the problem is, is that they won't know that until they actually get you approved, get you an onset date, see if there's any other applications that they can get you back as far as they can. And then once they have a better picture, then they can kind of give you an indication. So, and the nice thing is Social Security will usually give you documentation about all this as it's playing out. Back pay is a beast. Focus on getting disability first. And then once you get approved, then a lot of this stuff will work itself out of court. Tune in tomorrow as we talk about pain medications and your disability case.